you can create a new blank invoice or create an invoice directly from an estimate. Now we'll go over creating them from estimates in the next video. So right now we're gonna create a new blank invoice. Before we do that though, there's one special item that we need to set up which makes creating invoices a lot easier. And that is setting up a subtotal. So let's click on items and services. The first thing we're gonna do is scroll down to item at the bottom of the screen and choose new. In the type of item dropdown, choose subtotal. You can give it a name. I'm simply gonna call it subtotal. Click the blue okay button. And now we can close out of this and start working on creating our invoice. So click create invoices from the home screen. And the first thing you need to decide is who the invoice is for. So in the customer job dropdown, choose the customer that you're creating the invoice for. It fills in the invoice date, though you can change that. It increments the next invoice number. You can also change that. And the next invoice from here is gonna start incrementally based off of this number. You can change the address if you want. On the right hand side, you'll see the customer summary. This shows you things like their balance, any active estimates they have, and recent transactions like other invoices and payments they've sent me. Here's where I can set some other fields for the invoice. Now I don't have to use these if I don't want to. For example, I may not have a PO number. I can click the pull down next to terms and say when this invoice is due. I can choose a sales rep if they had one. So let's start adding some line items. I'm gonna start by adding the quantity of the item and then I'm gonna hit the tab key. Click the pull down next to item code and this is gonna bring up our list of products. So you can simply click on a product. It populates the description, though I can change that if I want. It shows the price. I can also put my cursor in here and manually override the price if I wanted to. It shows me the total based on the quantity and it automatically knows the item is taxable because we specified that when we set up the item. I can either put my cursor down to the next row or I can hit the tab key until I got there. But for now, I can keep adding items. I'll add one more. If I wanted to delete an item, I could right click and choose delete line. This is the easiest way to remove a line item from an invoice. Now, do you remember when we made that subtotal? If you wanna see what your current subtotal is for an order, simply add a subtotal as your item. You'll see that it adds the subtotal as a line and it subtotals all the items that are directly above it. From here, I can actually keep adding items. So once we've done that, the next thing you need to decide is what tax liability the customer has if you haven't already specified it in their customer profile. In this case, I'll pick the Rhode Island group tax. It shows me the tax, the total, and the balance due. I can specify whether online pay is enabled or not. I'm gonna select off. Now, online pay is a service that's an add-on for QuickBooks. If I wanted to enable it, which gives me the ability to have my customers pay me online and have it get directly deposited into my bank account, I can come up here to the top right and select online pay, choose settings, and follow the instructions to turn it on. I can also add a customer message from the dropdown. Make sure the customer tax code is correct, that is, whether they're liable for sales tax or not. And then I can decide how I want to get it to that customer. For example, print, email, print later, or email later. Now there's a couple of other interesting things that I can do with invoices. If I wanna see how it looks, I can click print and I can preview it as always, but I get a few more templates I can choose. It defaults to the Intuit product invoice as you can see in the template section at the top. If I click this pull down, I have a few choices here. For example, I have a professional invoice. If I select that, I can then choose print, preview, and see how it looks. I'll click close, change to a different invoice, select print, preview, click OK at the shipping label, and now I can see that this one looks a little bit different. You'll notice that it gives me shipping terms, things like sales reps, other things that weren't there on the other invoice. Click close, and something else that I can print is a packing slip. So I'll choose my packing slip as the template. I'll come to print, choose preview, click OK, and now I can see that I get an actual packing slip I can put in with the product. There's no prices here, just quantities and products. I'll click close again, save and close. It's telling me that I changed the terms for this company and it's asking me if I wanna have this new information appear on every invoice I send to them. I'll say yes, and my invoice has been created.